Did you know that professionals manage project finances are actually engineers, not accountants? However, these engineers are unique when it comes to their knowledge and background. So unlike construction or technical teams, these professionals spend most of their time working with numbers. These amazing professionals are called quantity surveyors. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the key responsibilities of a quantity surveyor and most importantly, what to focus to grow a successful career in this field. So if you are a quantity surveyor or a Inspiring to become one or simply curious about what they do, this video is for you and let's start. Hello and welcome to Cost Engineering Professional. I am Ahmed Adel and here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you can quickly subscribe. And with this out of the way, let's see what are the quantity surveyor duties and responsibilities that we have here. I will categorize these duties under three main headings. And the first one will be the pre-contract works. And basically the pre-contract works are just the works related to the tendering or bidding. So here under the pre-contract works, we have everything that will be done before the contract is signed. And then we have the post-contract works, which are the works that will be done after the contract is signed. And here for the post-contract works, we have the contract administration and project requirements. And more on that later on here. And the third category we have is the other fields related works. And we have here procurement, planning, cost control, and alternative dispute resolution. And again, more on these things later on. But what we have here is the roadmap. This is a general roadmap of all the duties that will come under a quantity surveyor. But it's just about when, before the contract is signed or after the contract is signed. And actually these can be post-contract works like after the contract is signed, but just for some reasons that we will discuss, I am keeping them separate from the post-contract works. And now let's start with the pre-contract works. So for the pre-contract works, which are the works before the execution or before even signing the contract, we will be invited to a tender or to a bidding. And in this stage, what exactly is our duty or what do we need to do? We are invited to a project, so we should be able to do the quantity takeoff and we should be able to understand the scope of work. We should be able to send RFIs or requests for clarifications and receive addendums for our clarifications and we should be able to estimate the cost and also we should know the bid submission process. And now I'll go into each point and I'll explain it further. So starting with the quantity takeoff, what exactly do we need to know about the quantity takeoff? We need to know how to measure the items from the drawings and put the quantities in the BOQ. And about measuring the items, for example, how to measure the raft, we need the area multiplied by the depth. So I know how to measure the item. For the block walls, how to measure a block wall, you need the length, multiplied by the height, you get the wall area, then deduct the openings, so you get the quantity in square meters. So that's how you measure block walls. So you need to know how to measure the different items and activities in the project from the drawings, which drawing to use, how to measure the item, and so on. Then knowing the unit of measurement for the different BOQ items. This item is measured in number, this is measured in linear meter, this is measured in square meter, cubic meter, and so on. Then the next point we have here is understanding the scope of work. And actually, as a quant surveyor working in the pre-contract works and being invited to a project, this is a very important point. Understand the scope of work. We should know the BOQ divisions and the items that come under each division so that we can understand the scope of the project. What are the work packages in the project? Drawings, specifications, soil report, etc. So these are the things that will come under understanding the scope of work, which is a duty of a quantity surveyor working in the pre-contract works. Also under understanding the scope of work, we need to understand the required general requirements for the project. And we need to be able to find missing items in the project BOQ because if the project is lump sum, something is missing, then you will do it from your own pocket. So it's a very important point here. Creating a BOQ if no BOQ is there for the project. So if there is no BOQ provided, you need to know how to do your own BOQ. And also reading the draft agreement and seeing if there are any obligations in the agreement that will add something to your scope. For example, termination of services. 
if it is in your scope, then you will have to spend for that. So this is also an important point. So understanding the scope of work of a project that you are being invited to bid for is a very important thing. And then we have the clarifications. So let's assume that in our project or in our tender, there is something that we don't understand or some contradicting information or something, and you need more information on that from the client. So you will have to send requests for information to the client. And once you send this request, then they will reply to you with addendum to whatever was provided as a tender document. And you should be able to review these addendums and apply their impact to the scope. So this is an important part as well. After that, we have the cost estimation. So I am a quantity surveyor or cost engineer working in the pre-contract. I should be able to estimate the cost. And under the cost estimation, we should be able to do the following. We should be able to send the inquiries and receive quotations for different materials and subcontractor works. And we should also be able to do rate comparisons to see which one we will use. But actually, we will not do it in a very deep detail. You are not procuring yet, but you are like estimating the cost. So you need to build your price based on the prices of others. Also the rate analysis and estimating the cost for the materials, equipment, manpower and subcontractors required is a very important point. And as we discussed, the general requirements, things like that will come under cost estimation. Very important thing to learn. And it's a very important duty of a quantity surveyor working in pre-contract. Also the project margins, how to add the margins, overhead, risk, and the profit. And in addition to that, we need to be able to write an offer with the contractor qualifications and all of that. By the way, all this time, I am assuming that you are a contractor being invited to bid for a project. But actually, if you are working with the consultant or the client, your responsibilities will not be much more different, but you have to look at the things from a different angle. That's it. So instead of writing the offer, you will be the one reviewing the offer. Instead of searching for missing items in the BOQ because you are worried they will affect your price, you will be searching for missing items in the BOQ just to make sure that you are sending a very good tender documents that any contractor can price based on. So it doesn't matter in which like position you are, still the duties or the responsibilities are the same. After that, we have the bid submission process. And actually you need to be familiar with the bid submission process. Is it just online BOQ filling or you have to send a closed envelope or sometimes you just send an email with your price and BOQ and also check if tender bond is required. So these are the duties of someone working in the pre-contract works. So like that, if you have these skills, if you know how to do these things, then we can say that you are by all means senior, not junior, because you can receive a tender, you can price it, you can estimate the cost and submit the offer and send the RFIs and go through the drawings, the specifications and everything and come up with a price or a bid for the project. So you are a senior in that case, you are not a junior anymore. So this is very important part of your duties as a quantity surveyor, the pre-contract works. Now coming to the post-contract works, and I have two things here. We have the contract administration and we have the project requirements and we will elaborate on that. So for the contract administration, there are a few things. Now you have your contract, you are awarded a project and you have a contract and you need to look into your performance bond as per the contract advance payment and your interim payment applications and variations if any claims if any and formal notifications of any kind if you want to send something to the client so all these things will come under your duties or your responsibilities as a quantity surveyor working in the post contract works after the contract is signed so for the performance bond here we need to see in which form is the performance bond. And are we actually, as per our contract, are we required to submit a performance bond or no? And if yes, what is the form of the performance bond? Is it bank guarantee, security check, promissory note, whatever. So we should submit the performance bond because our contract says so. And after that, we have the advance payment. So for the advance payment, again, as per the contract, what is the advance payment security? In which form? It can be in one of these forms as well. 
and also the request for advance payment what are the documents required if there is anything other than the security required to be submitted you will see what your contract says about that and you will submit for advance payment and these two things performance bond and the advance payment are the first two things that you will be doing in a project because the project is just getting started after this we have the interim payment applications and when you are starting to work and you are making progress you need to submit for payments so preparing the payment application in terms of numbers and the progress and all of this stuff is one thing that you are required to do and also compiling the required documents like inspection requests or shop drawings or whatever the client or the consultant will need from you to attach with your payment application so this is a very important part or a very important duty and also once you submit your interim payment application you need to discuss it with the consultant or the client because they will negotiate no your progress is not like that prove this percentage do so and so so there will be a discussing or discussion part involved here also applying the retention and the material on site to your payment as per the contract is a thing that you should be able to do or you should know how to do it so we have retention and material on site after this you might encounter variations or claims or sometime you need to send notice of something so these things will be under your duties as well as a quantity surveyor working in the post contract works and this is contract administration you are just doing contract administration and these will be the things but not only that there will be some project requirements this will be between the quantity surveyor and the project manager and example of that can be the materials required the project manager need to supply concrete or steel or block or cement or sand so you should be able to take off these uh, materials required and all and send them to the procurement team and so on so following up with procurement team for subcontracts finalization and material delivery is a very important part also because you need a full ceiling subcontractor you need to supply the steel to the site you need so and so so what is the status of these things as a quantity surveyor working in a project you should follow up with the procurement team and see the status of these things also the cash flow monitoring very important for the project and when it comes to the subcontractors that will be working in your project you should do these things also so collaborate with procurement team for the finalizing of the subcontracts for the subcontractors and the subcontractor payments and subcontractor variations because you will have to pay the subcontractor and they might or you might come across variations as well so this is also an important thing so these are all coming under the project requirements not the consultant and the client and the contract requirements this is your company or your project manager or your project requirements and now when we come to the other fields related works these are works that i will not say 100 percent duties of a quantity surveyor but see the procurement the best procurement engineers i have seen personally are from quantity surveying background and the best quantity surveyors i have seen actually are having very good procurement background so the two fields are very much connected or related and actually as a quantity surveyor you can work in procurement and you will be very good coming to the planning and the cost control i know there will be a planning engineer and a cost control engineer but let's think about it this way cost control the first step of cost control actually is preparing the budget so who will prepare the budget if not a QS and for the planning you have your time schedule like that but you will have to load the cost on this to get your S curve so loading the cost here coordinating with planning team understanding the concepts of planning is very important thing for a quantity surveyor and for the alternative dispute resolution here actually you will come across this in case of like dispute or something it will not be something regular but having a good knowledge here is a very important knowledge area or very important thing that you should to do if you want to grow having these knowledge areas as well so to summarize this our duties and the responsibilities will come under these three main categories pre-contract tendering or bidding post-contract contract administration project requirements 
and also the procurement planning, cost control, alternative dispute resolution, and so on. And now I have a question for you. Out of the things that we have discussed in this video, what are the things that you think you personally need to work on more in order to grow your career? Let me know in the comments below. And you can watch this video where I explain more about cost estimation. And that will be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.